they're creepy, but not really like gory or horrific. But when you get to this weapon, you're like, okay, this is pretty, this is pretty gory. Somewhere in a small town, Professor Esker has lost his dear companion, Mr. Mittens. And because of this, he's decided to do some experimentation on the town's pets in the pet cemetery. Hopefully, after concocting just the right experimentation, he'll be able to bring back his beloved Mr. Mittens from the grave. Now you are one of the townspeople, and the sheriff has determined that Mr. Esker needs to be put behind bars for his cruel and unusual experimentation between pets, and you have to go and attempt to arrest him and gather the bounty on Professor Esker. But other townsfolk are also in to win as well, and they're going to attempt to cross the board and get to the other side where Professor Esker is doing his scary unique experiments. This is the Pet Cemetery. The Pet Cemetery plays two to six players. It takes about 30 minutes or so to play the game and is for ages, I'd say about 10 and up. It's a pretty simple game as far as it goes. You'll have actions to move across the board as well as to perform actions based on the space that you land on. You'll be able to draw cards and play cards from an action deck. And if you can get to the end with the handcuffs and arrest Mr. Esther first, you are going to win. Let's take a look down below, show you what the game has in it and basically how to play and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. Welcome to the Pet Cemetery, and this is what you'll be getting in the game. Now, this is a prototype, however, so it will not look exactly like the production copy, but I'm going to guess it's a pretty close reenactment of what you're going to get. You're going to start with the boards here, and you're going to set them up by placing blue to blue and red to red. Make sure that you go ahead and place them just like this. It'll always be the same every time. There are your six character cards, the thief, the gunslinger, the sheriff, the strong man, the card shark, and the speedster, which all have one-time use abilities the game and once you've utilized them they're done for the rest of the game but you can use them whenever you want provided you're allowed to it'll tell you on the card there's also these little reanimated critters here and standees for each of the characters as well as the pet cemetery deck now to set the game up like i said before place all the boards here make sure the characters are all in the starting area here and shuffle up the deck removing the handcuff cards after you do that go ahead and then deal out three cards from the pet cemetery deck to each player then based on the number of players place the number of handcuffs into the deck so in a three-player game shuffle in three handcuffs and then after that, you're ready to begin. And it's simple, you have three actions. You can either A, move your character up, down, left, or right. Starting on here, you can choose any of these spaces here. Or you could choose to play a card or to simply draw a card from the deck. Now your objective is to get to the end, but in order to pass this little line here, you're going to need to have handcuffs. And if you have the handcuffs and you cross the line, then you win the game, as long as you're the first person to do so. And people are gonna try and stop that from happening by Landing on certain spaces. Certain spaces will let you summon little critters. When you land on one of these spaces here, you'll summon a critter to any other space of the same type. When you land on a scratch mark, you're going to be moving the critters just like you would a player, up, down, left, or right. And when you land on these little circles, these are basically safe spaces. Nobody can touch you here. The little critters can't get at you because little critters are dangerous. Then you also have the treasure chest. When you have a treasure chest and you land on that, you will draw two cards, choose one, and place the other on top of the deck. Those are all the main spaces in the game. The only other thing you need to know about is you have these little yellow lines on the red line. Yellow lines are basically save points. After you get across them, you do not have to go back. You will always go just behind that space if you get hit by a critter and you don't have a weapon. And then, of course, the red space is simply meaning that you have to have handcuffs. So as you're moving around the game, you'll get one action and you'll choose one of the three to move, draw a card, or to uh, play a card. And after that, you're going to end your turn after performing the action on the space. The next player will get to go, and of course, they can go ahead and perform that action, and so on and so forth. If, for instance, somebody were to, let's say, be right here, right, and then you had a character that was right here, move onto the space here, and on the scratch mark, you're going to have one of the pets move up, down, left, or right. And in this case, 
probably move into your opponent. Your opponent is then going to have to play a card like a weapon card. And if they can't, they'll have to go back just behind the line of the starting space and you'll remove that little pet there. So that's the way you can kind of push players back. There's also cards in the deck to do certain things, which I'll talk about in my review above. But for the most part, that's how you do it. Get your handcuffs, get across the board, get to the end, and win the game of Pet Cemetery. The first thing I thought of when I was playing this game was it bring back memories of the game The Refuge. The Refuge is a game in which you are moving your character along a board, avoiding traps and other players' cards to try and get to the end. And of course, you're dealing with zombies in that game. And zombies function just like the critters do in this one. And you're attempting to get across the board and have the key in order to do so in order to get into this like safe facility. Kind of like The Walking Dead, how you have to, how they have to try and find their safe haven. Similar in the game The Refuge. And this plays very, very, very similar to that one. Uh, the difference mainly in this game is the theme and the certain cards that you're going to play on your opponents. Now, like I said in the game, you get one of three actions and you're simply going to do them. They're going to be very, very quick. The game is going to be fairly quick as well. And the main thing you're going to be trying to do is to dig in the deck, this deck here, for handcuffs. The moment you get a handcuff, your objective is to keep it and get to the end of the board. But other players are going to try and take those from you. And in order to do so, they're going to use certain cards. They have these cards called steel where you can randomly steal a card from an opponent you've got monsters that you can activate whether it be on a space or using a card like this that lets you move a monster into a space of an opponent and if they do not have a weapon like these guys then they're going to be toast and with this it has save points which is nice so you're not going all the way back so i think that's actually a difference in this one comparatively to that one but in general yes it functions very similar so if you've played the refuge you probably know how this game plays and of course it's going to also have unique little movement modifiers whether you're moving diagonally or jumping or switching places with another player and of course combo cards so you can add this little protein use the weapon use the protein and then use another weapon and so you have combos that you can kind of make there's nothing that makes you lose turns in the game which is nice but there are cards that will let other players gain turns the game is mainly kid friendly which is what the audience for this type of game is going to be because it's fairly simple what you're going to do on your turn most of the time you know what you need to do generally speaking if there is a little pet monster next to one of your opponents you will step on the space that lets you move the monster move it onto your opponent and hope they suffer by having to go back because it's always your objective to move forward in the game very rarely do you want to move backwards but there are some times when you do and generally when that is is because you do not have handcuffs and you're trying to find them so moving onto treasure chests will allow you to have extra draws to try and find them and of course messing with your opponents who might have them if you're not able to grab them from their hands Luckily, though, there are, like I said, there's the steel cards in the game, so you can find ways in order to get those cards from your opponents. And generally speaking, you kind of know who's got what if they are racing to the end. Well, if you're stuck at the end and you're waiting because you can't get those handcuffs. So there's a little bit of a stalemate that can happen for certain players. Now, that being said, though, this game is going to be more for a family-style audience. It's going to be more for kids. And the game is simple enough to where pretty much any kid, I would even say, like, 8 to 15 is going to understand. It's not a game that I would generally play over and over again, specifically because it is more for the younger audience, but it's a game I could see myself playing with my younger cousins, nieces, and nephews, those type of people, because they're the ones that are going to enjoy this game far more by messing with players, utilizing those cards and those special abilities. Nothing is overwrite broken or overpowered. Everything kind of feels pretty same as to what you draw. And I think it fits pretty well in the kid category as far as how the game plays. I would not recommend this game to a group of gamers that are probably over the age of 20. It's probably not going to be something they're going to want to play as much. However, the game does have kind of an identity crisis. So what I mean by that is you're, you're people in the town trying to arrest the doctor who's messing with the animals and he's trying to like recreate his his beloved mittens and you have to kill the animals as you're going across the board uh, which is i guess fine but it's got a bunch of weapons with lots of gory blood all over them uh showing that you are uh, stabbing and shooting and axing all the little animals so 
I feel like, like, I guess, like, maybe that, like, edgy 13 area is right. Like, any any of those kids that are in that little area that kind of like that, it's, like, not super gory, obviously. It's just got some blood on it. I personally would probably think of the audience and maybe assume to make it a little more kid-friendly just because that's the type of game it is, whereas appealing to somebody who's going to be more in their, like, later teens, this game could appeal to a broader audience, so I would kind of dial it back a little bit because you have all these cute little bone animals that have, like, it's hard to see the little guys here, but they they're super cute. They've got little like skeleton, skeleton head rabbits and little kittens that are kind of like, they're creepy, but not really like gory or horrific. But when you get to this weapon, you're like, okay, this is pretty, this is pretty gory. But I guess that could just be me though. And it depends on kids. I don't know kids these days anyway. Maybe they just like that stuff. But regardless, that's something that you can consider. Uh, the game, like I said, is fairly simple. It's pretty easy to understand. The artwork is cool. I like all the artwork. The, some of the characters I think are done a little better than others. Uh, the board itself is very nice, pretty simplistic as to how it looks. And I think it features what a kid would like in general. And it's gonna be really easy for kids to teach other kids in a game like this. So. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, The Pet Cemetery, not to be confused with Pet Cemetery, The Pet Cemetery, and you want to go ahead and uh, go ahead and put that Dr. Esker into a resker, and go ahead and take a link, link down below in the description. It'll be on Kickstarter for you to pick up. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Tell me whether or not this is a game that you'd be interested in picking up or whether or not it would not be. All right, outro. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment, hit that bell notification button. It does greatly help us and it continues to make us want to put out more and more videos for you guys. And of course, let us know what you think about these games, The Pet Cemetery. Tell me what you think, whether it's something you would want to pick up for yourself or for your kids. Is my analysis, my deep, deep analysis incorrect? And if so, why? As well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists. We have a brand new website with a ton of content coming out for you guys to check take a look at and we're going to be doing some interesting new things we're doing some board game battles something i'm bringing back from my olden days two years ago but we're going to do it on a blog post on the site and it'll be much more uh well done and better produced and of course if you want check out our live streams every wednesday 6 30 p.m pst on facebook and or on twitch and join the discord so you don't miss out on anything and you can see all the new games that are coming out thing next week or this week it's gonna be pendulum we're gonna play so that's pretty exciting by stonemire games all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to never going in a pet cemetery with you next time <laughs>